Yo, what is going on guys? We're going to be talking about something a little controversial today. We're talking all about the war, the loyalty, potions, compensation, all that stuff. And I'm just going to be real with you. I'm going to tell you how I feel and I'm going to be honest with you. And if you get mad at that, man, I don't know what to say. I'm just giving you my honest opinion. And I'm also going to tell you guys a little story. Um, let's just start with the story. Because some people think that Oh, you're in the CCP. You can't you can't talk bad about Kabam. Oh, you're always on Kabam's side. Oh, you're a Kabam shill. Oh, if you agree with Kabam, ah, it's because you get paid by Kabam. Oh, you're a Kabam employee. And all this baloney. So so much of that baloney. Like well, first of all, no one has ever in the history of CCP been kicked or got in trouble for saying their honest thoughts and anything negative about Kabam. It's never happened. We are free to say anything we want now. Me, as an individual, you know, I've tried to keep things respectful, be nice, be cordial, I think it's the right word. Um, but, you know, I've definitely said negative things about Kabam before. I'm not afraid to, but I do also try to look for the good in Kabam. And when they do good stuff, I try to point it out because I try to be a positive guy because I've had a lot of negative stuff throughout my life and... I've been in really negative mindsets before, and that's when life's not good for me. When I have a positive mindset, I keep a positive attitude, keep things happy, I enjoy life way more. I enjoy YouTube way more, and everything is just better. So I try to, I try to stay positive. You know, it, it's hard sometimes. It really is hard sometimes, but I try to. Um, so I try to look for the good. Um, so I'm going to tell you guys what happened. So, you know, I've always tried to be nice to Kabam. I've always thought there was, like, mutual respect there. Uh, but I've never been afraid to share my opinion, uh, which you guys saw when I missed a Legends run. And I was mad and I, I made a video ranting, and I swearing and all kinds of stuff, you know. It's happened before. But now, something happened at the end of last year. Now, last year, I, I was going through some tough times throughout the year. Uh, like I said, negative mindsets. And uh, at one point, there was a new position being offered at Kabam, which is basically, it was uh, J. Nick, he, he now occupies that position. Uh, but when it started, you know, they opened it up mainly to the CCP at first. And they um, they had like a list of criteria of like stuff that they're looking for in the person that they want to hire. And, you know, being a high skilled player was, was one of the things, you know, having an understanding of all, every gameplay mechanic, having pretty much like all content done that that type i think I, I was looking for the list i couldn't find it in in the cp discord but basically, basically it's a list of things that they're looking for and i i pretty much checked every box in my mind i checked all the boxes and uh i've i've kind of always wanted to work for kabam uh back in 2019 i kabam john actually kind of like he didn't offer me a position but you know he he said he could if i gave him my resume you know he could he could hand it off and uh, I, I'd been talking to some guys, you know, about working. I thought it would be cool, and you know, like there was possibility. But this was this was 2019. I was 19 years old, and it would I'd have to move to Vancouver. And when I was 19, you know, that was years three years ago. I I was not prepared to up and move my whole life to Vancouver. I do live in Canada. I live in Alberta, but it's still a bit far, uh, Vancouver to Alberta. So, you know, I I was like, thanks, John, but you know, I think I'm just gonna stick to YouTube. And, and I did, and, and YouTube was good for a while. Uh, but now fast forward to 2021, about September uh, of last year. And um, there's this new position and I'm like, okay, like this, this could be good. And they even said that you, you don't have to move to Vancouver. You don't have to live in Canada. Like, it doesn't matter where you live. Uh, you can, they're looking for someone who can work from online or maybe eventually go and go to Vancouver. And like, I was down to eventually go to Vancouver. I think I wanted to start out maybe online, but then you know, I'd be down to go to Vancouver and, and work for Kabam, right? So I applied and they, and they said, you know, if you apply, message Kabam Mike, message Kabam Fell. So I did, I, I messaged John too. I told him like, hey man, like I'm, I'm applying for the job. And they were all, I was just greeted with warmth. Like, oh, that's awesome. Really glad you're applying and, and all this stuff. And they're like, you're going to have an interview. And I'm like, wonderful. You know, and I got really excited because, you know, I wasn't super on my YouTube grind at the time, and I just was kind of looking for a change, you know, 
uh, if I did get the job there, you know, I'd have benefits, uh, which would be great, like dental, you know, health, everything like that. That'd be really nice because uh, I don't have any of that. I don't get anything like that from YouTube, no type of benefits. Uh, and, and I was planning on still continuing to do YouTube as well. I wanted to do both. And I thought like I could really do good. I have a lot of ideas. Like I thought if I worked for Kabam, I could do a lot of good and I could really help out you guys and and, and I thought it'd be so great, you know, so I applied, I was really excited, I told my family about it, I told all my close friends about it, and I, I was really excited. I wanted to tell you guys too, but, you know, I didn't want to say anything prematurely, right? And so, time goes by, weeks go by, and I, I don't hear anything, and, you know, I, I just assume, and I'm just waiting, like, they told me I have my interview, like, I wasn't stressing, I was just waiting for them to hit me up, right? Weeks and weeks and weeks go by, and I don't hear anything. So, you know, I hit up Kabam John because uh, me and him are, like, actually friends. Like, we play some Smash Ultimate sometimes online, and he's a really good guy. He's, he's, I think I, I consider him a good friend. So, and the, the position would be working with him as well. So, like, you know, I, I, I kind of thought I had a really good chance of getting this job. Um, and I told my friends that. I told my family that, and I was excited about it. And... I hit up Bam John and I, and I asked him like, "Hey man, you know, like, what's going on? Like, am I, when's the interview gonna be? Like that type of thing." And he basically tells me that, "Hey, sorry man, we decided to go another way, and we already have someone else in mind for the position." And like, and I, my response was like, "Oh, okay, thanks for the heads up." But that's my response. But on the inside, man, I that that really hurt. I think the best way to describe how I felt was disrespect i think is the perfect way to it. disrespect and disregard I, I i haven't felt that disrespected in a long time and like i said I, I always thought there was this mutual respect between me and kabam and i and, and i feel like they disrespect me so hard man like i don't need the job but like at least give me a heads up and the, the thing that really pissed me off was i found out like other youtubers that also applied they got interviews, and I heard about their interviews, like Brian Grant, Karate Mike. These guys got their interviews. I was promised one. I didn't even, I didn't even get the goddamn interview. I, I just felt so disrespected. And after that, man, I've, I've kind of ju just um, looked at Kabam in a bit of a different way. And like I said, I, I wasn't afraid to share my opinion before. But and after this happened, I, I'm really not afraid to say anything. Um, not that I was before, but. So, so that, that, that's the story I want to share with you guys. Um, so please consider that when I, when I'm about to talk about what I'm about to talk about, uh, that, that's how I feel about Kabam. I felt very disrespected and, uh, they still never said anything. They never apologized. Nothing, not, not a word. So, you know, whatever, like I'm, I'm way over it now. Um, but just wanted to share that before we, we get into the video, even though it was a bit of a long story, um, but now let's get into this post and start talking about the issues at hand here. I, I just wanted to share that in case someone tries to call me a kabam shill or something like. I want you to know that story first. Okay, now let's get into this. So, Alliance Wars, Season 34 update. Let's start reading this. So, we can now see the new loyalty that we're going to be getting for Season 34. So, currently... I'm just going to be using tier 1 because that's the tier I'm in. Again, I'm going to be talking about this from my own perspective. So, expert tier 1 right now, a win is 12,000 loyalty. A loss is a little under 5,000. Exploration, 9,200. Going forward, next season, a win is going to be 75,000 loyalty. A loss will be 37,500. And exploration will be staying the same. That is a massive increase in loyalty, which is great to see. I hope Kabam keeps in, uh, increasing the loyalty in other areas of the game. And so, note, there's no changes to exploration. That's fine. Yada, yada, yada. However, we wanted to swing a little further with our changes and took some inspiration from our community. And then now we're getting these 40% health revives in the loyalty store. So we'll be adding level 1 health team revives that heal your KO champions for 40% of their total HP the loyalty store these new percentage based alliance war revives will be available for just one loyalty with no purchase limits there are only revives uh this not only makes revives more accessible but also contributes 40 percent of a champion's max health using the amounts of potion needed to heal champion after a ko still experimental change yada yada in the future we also plan to exclude a rise from counting towards the item limit but that will that's not something they're looking to change right now and shout out to dna for this idea dna is a good guy um glad they are listening to him and then we have some other changes here so 
Level 2 and 3 team revives have been removed from the store. And previously, level 2 and 3 team war team revives can now be sold for a base loyalty cost. Alliance war team revives bought in the last month or for units will be refunded via in-game message or at a later, da later date. Level 2, uh, these revives, you get back 25k loyalty. Level 3, we get back 45k loyalty. And then Alliance War Boosts are now purchasable for units, but they're still, I'm pretty sure everything on here is still being purchasable through loyalty. This is just an additional way to get it through units. So Alliance War Champion Boost, 180 units, Attack and Health, 60 units, Combat Regeneration Boost, three, these are the 3 minute gray boost, 125 units, Power Start Boost, 250 units, and an Invulnerability Boost, 375 units. Uh, which is interesting because the, I thought these boosts were all supposed to be on like the same playing field, if you will. Uh, there's an equal chance to get them from War Crystals, uh, War Boost Crystals. They they cost they all cost ten thousand loyalty in the loyalty store. So you know what's what's with the absurd unit differentials? Um, it's literally doubled. It's one twenty five doubled to two fifty, and then another one twenty five on top of that to three set. Like that's weird but i mean it makes sense because invulnerability boosts are definitely the best and i say powerful ones and then combat regen so in that regard it does make sense but i'm just a little weird then we have updated the war uh bundles these are the ones that you spend a bunch of units on uh, i had to buy these for my mythic run which sucked um but yeah and here we have some insights so with the weekly compensation coming to a close we think that free revives will continue to help players feel less of a burden from deaths and at the cost of consumables and reduce the potion cost of recovering from a KO in Alliance Wars. It's not the final change we'll be making to consumables. Uh, we're going to closely monitor how potions and revives are used in the coming seasons and the relationship between their use and Alliance Wars uh, and look to make more changes in the future. Season 34 of Alliance Wars starts May 25th, 2022, and these changes will go into effect then. So, these are the new changes. Now, how do I feel about these? I think they're good changes. Uh, the 40% uh health revive is going to help when we have a ko'd uh boosted rank four champion you know that's that is really going to help in healing them up but at the same time the goal of war is to not die you know you, you shouldn't especially in tier one you know you shouldn't be dying every war so these aren't really useful in in every war situations they're only useful when you die which should hopefully be more of a rare occurrence so it helps in that regard but not in the main regard of you know you come out of a fight with you almost died 10 percent health well these don't help me in the, those scenarios right but i think it is still overall a good change good to see more loyalty as well now i, I didn't talk about it a ton especially on my channel about um when the changes first went live i think kabam handled the original changes terribly absolutely terribly i remember when i i the day i heard about it I opened my game. The first thing I did was I went to the glory store and all I was thinking is, okay, you know, with this change in my coming, I'm going to stock up on some potions. And I scroll down and they're gone. The the day Kabam announces it, they changed the glory store. That That is total baloney. They, they should have at least given fair warning, a chance to stock up a bit. Like, they just did it. That, that was, I think, a total bad wrong move. Now, as far as the change in general, it it makes sense, you know, like looking back, like hindsight is 2020, of course, and looking back on things, it, it makes sense, you know, the, the, the potions in the glory store were alliance based. These were old potions that we've had since the start of alliance events. As far as my recollection serves, they can be used in AQ or AW, but over the course of the last couple of years, Kabam has wanted to define these areas and created new potions you know they created um war specific potions and aq specific potions but we still had the alliance potions that could be applied to both areas being sold for glory but glory is an aq resource um so you know looking back i feel like kabam's probably been planning this for quite a while and i, I can really see it now and it makes sense that they're they're trying to do that um but we we needed warning we absolutely needed way more warning um and you know overall a lot of people think it's a very negative change personally from my own experience guys again this is all my own personal opinion and experience that's why i share the story because i'm just speaking the truth from my own perspective here that i i have actually been liking this change um personally i have been spending a lot more of my glory 
I pretty much all I've been buying is T2A and Tier 5 Basic because that's the resources that I personally need to keep getting more and more rank ups and rank three, rank twos, and then of course to rank threes is my main focus right now. I'm just trying to rank up as many champs as I can, trying to expand my roster as much as I can, specifically for Battlegrounds, but also for other reasons. And so my main focus has been spending my glory on these items. Before this change, I, I would have like 8,000 loyalty just sitting there um, and I'd be saving it and I'd buy a potion every day, which was good for war, but you know, I'd, I would rather focus my eight, my glory on these rank materials, and they also made changes to these costs, and it's much better a bang for your buck, glory-wise. So personally, I've really been liking the change glory-wise. I can just focus all my spending on rank of material, and then as far as loyalty goes, every day I've just been picking up a potion. You can see I'm at 17 of these potions now. I'm just slowly building up my inventory for the next season of Alliance War or whenever conversation on it. I've actually been picking up, started picking up one of all of these potions because why not? You know, I'll stock up, I'll have, I want to get to max limit on all of these potions. Um, and I've still been buying uh, invulnerability boosts. Now, what I really want to talk about is the compensation packages. Now, th this is a massive reason why I, I wasn't too mad about the changes because again totally from my own perspective i have not had pretty much like there's been a couple instances of like oh i felt like that was a bug or a parry bug or an input issue or something like less than 10 times probably around five times i've, I've had issues in game with mechanics or anything like that over the past like six months over the past half a year maybe five times i've had an issue and it's never costed me um in war in aq you know i've, I've mainly experienced these issues in like story type of content and, I, and i'm not saying that people haven't experienced issues in war in aq this cost them I, i'm not speaking for anyone else here i'm only speaking from my own perspective there's been the input refractor which was available to the ccp a little while ago um which you know is supposed to be the old inputs is supposed to be a fix I never used that. I never turned it on a single time, uh, and, I, and I haven't had any issues gameplay-wise. You know, maybe five, and especially in the last couple months, I haven't had any. Like 2022, this year I've maybe had two. I remember like I had two issues, and it was during 7.4, and that was it. Outside of those two issues, I haven't had any problems with gameplay issues. Not a single one. So for me, this compensation is essentially free stuff that's what i look at it as and guys I, I i think a lot of people really don't understand the value of these compensation packages and a lot of people complain they're like oh you know it's too much my stuff expires and all this stuff and it's like that's a good problem to have man for me i've had some stuff expire like probably the only stuff i really have expire is the combat regen boost everything else i really try my best to put it to use and I've made a little notepad here, uh, doing some math and showing the prices to because I, I really want to illuminate <laughs> these compensation packages. So let's take a, a look at that now. Um, so uh, I, I did some math. Now, this is going to sound wild, but let me just explain and go through it. So th for the AQ and War Potions... Uh, AQ potions and revives alone just those alone just these items right here these four items one two three four AQ potions revives and war potions and revives that has a value kabam's unit value of 2500 units 25 just for those four items the amount of those four items that's 2500 units per compensation package that is a lot. That is that is nice. And then, based off the new calculations that Kabam gave just now for those three minute boosts, uh, we you know I don't really count that, but I just wanted to put it there just because I was curious. So that, <laughs> which I think their unit costs are, are outrageous, but that would be another fifteen hundred units for the three minute boosts based off Kabam's new unit prices because we get two invol boosts, two we get two of each. 
So that's another 1,500 units. That brings us to a total of around 4,000 units per compensation package. But again, I don't really count that, so let's just leave it at the 2,500. But we also get 30,000 loyalty in each one of these compensation packages. 30,000 loyalty. Guys, we have been getting these compensation packages. I, I was looking back in my photos. I was trying to figure out when they started. I'm not entirely sure, but I have photos going back to September. So doing the math on that, we'll get one, what, every week? We've received about 30, close to 30 of these compensation. If my math is right, if not, it might be off by maybe five or so. I don't know. Uh, but a ballpark number around 30 of these compensation packages. That is 900,000 loyalty. Myself here, I've never been able to save my loyalty. Never. Like, it's never gone above, like, 500,000. I, I never, I've never had a million loyalty. Not in my life playing this game. Until the compensation packages started. And what have I been doing with my loyalty? I've been saving it. I've been spending it, but I've been saving it. You know, I buy... I, I've, I've been loose with it, too. You know, I see... Um, uh, power back boosts that I that I need to stock up on those I, I get a buy in vulnerability boost I've, I've been buying the potions every day I have like 17 of them now They're, each one costs 20,000 units I still have a nice amount of loyalty and I only have that because of all these compensation packages and some people are going to say oh but I spent all mine on on MD cores to get mystic dispersion or the tech cores to get caller tech and good for you you saved a ton of units on that with all the loyalty that you got from these compensation packages that that's great you know uh and a lot of people like when this change happened i was in my alliance i remember saying like i got a million loyalty like i'm i'm okay with this change and everyone else was like well not everyone has a million loyalty and i'm like well that's true that is true but uh, again like if you don't have a million loyalty you spent it and i'm sure it was worth it too which is good but now we're hopefully going to be getting we are getting more loyalty with the change and hopefully more and more and more loyalty as well uh but that's a lot of loyalty uh that kabam is given out from just these compensation packages alone we've received about a total of 180 of the three minute boosts 150 of the level five warp those are the biggest war potions in the game before these compensation packages i never i've never i never used a level five war potion because I've never spent units on war potions. I've, I never have, and I and I hopefully never will. Um, I've, I've always used glory, and that's gotten me through. But when these compensation packs started coming through in September, I, I had to use the level 5 war potions, because if I didn't, they would expire, which is a good thing. So I was able to save a lot of my glory potions instead. Uh, and that's about 15,000 units in value on the level five war potion that's about 500 us dollars through these compensation packages um 75 unit uh total value given through the compensation packages including the aq stuff which i do use those aq potions uh, i make i actually make really good use of them i just fight stuff linked i fight nimrod linked all the time in in map eight i don't care I revive, if I die, it doesn't matter. Revive potions. I got so much from all these compensation packages. Not that I would ever actually spend units on Alliance Quest consumables, but I, if Kabam's given them to me, of course I'm going to use them. Uh, but that's like 25 Odins in, in value through these compensation packages. 2,500 US dollars throughout all these compensation packages. Uh, and then if we include the 3-minute boost switch, you know, uh, like I said, I, I just wanted to do it just to... Just why, why not? Why not include it based on Kabam's new calculations? It's about 120k unit value if we add in the 3 minute boost, which takes us to about 40 Odins, uh, 4,000 US dollars. That is a lot of money. The, like These compensation packages are so insane, man. So uh, ridiculously insane. I've, I, I've been doing war for free for like the last, I don't even know how many seasons. Just with these compensation packages, I, 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 I've been using some boosts that I get from other areas of the game, but for the most part, war has been like absolutely free for me for like over five seasons. So for me, like I, it really doesn't bother me with these changes because war has been free for so long and now it's just switching to loyalty. Personally, I'm okay with that. I, I really genuinely am. 
Uh, and I don't mind these changes. For me personally, it, it's been good. I've been able to focus my glory on rank up materials, which has been working good for me. It's been bettering my account. I have a decent stash of loyalty. Hopefully the loyalty keeps piling up with all the new changes. And I'm already, like I said, I'm already building my potion stash once these compensation packages go away. But something else that's cool is I have these war potions in overflow. So even by the time these compensation packages end, hopefully, you know, I'll have the max cap of these big war potions, which I think is 25. And these are 100 units a pop. Like, I've been able to save so much through these compensation packages. And I don't even feel like I, I deserve or need these compensation packages because I haven't even been affected by these problems in game. So for me, this is free stuff that I've been getting from Kabam. So, again, for me, my perspective on all this, not being a Kabam lover or a Kabam shill, like, I really, I've, I felt, I feel disrespected by Kabam, honestly. I lost respect for Kabam after what they did to me. But, judging this at face value, for me, I really don't mind these war changes, guys. Honestly, being a top tier 1 player in 4 Loki, from my own perspective, I really don't. And if you want to hate on me for sharing my perspective, man, ah, you must have a bad life if you got to hate on other people for them just sharing their honest opinion. Um, if I hear someone else's opinion and it's varying from others, I try to keep an open mind. I try to understand where they're coming from and I try to at least respect it. Um, so I hope you guys can just at least respect where I'm coming from. It's totally cool if you disagree. Like I said, I'm speaking from my perspective, not yours. So if things are different, you feel different, you are totally entitled to feel that way. Totally. But I am also entitled to feel this way. Um, but yeah, I, I've been really hesitant to talk about these issues because of my personal feelings for them. And because I know I don't agree with the masses on this issue. But decided today I just... Man, I just wanted to share my story and my opinions and how I feel. And I, I'm interested to see how this video does. Very inter interested to read the comments. That's going to do it, guys. Let me know if... if cause a lot of you guys wanted to know my opinion on this. So here it is. Uh, I'm sure it's not exactly the opinion you were looking for. But let me know if you want me to just keep it real with you guys. Be honest with these types of videos. Tell you how I genuinely feel. No BS. No lies. Nothing. Tell it straight to your face. I'm a straight shooter, man. That's that's how I like to be. So, very interested in the feedback. If you guys respect me telling it how it is, I would appreciate a like on the video. That's going to do it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Love you all. Peace out.